with an i7-4790K, 16 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz speed DDR3 RAM, and a GTX 970. I also got a new monitor. It turns sideways. And oh yeah, it's also 144 hertz. So let's test it. I've got Fraps and I've got Shadow Play. Let's get testing. Okay, so the next game we're looking at by request is GTA 5. And this is running on the GeForce recommended settings. Now, this is DirectX 11. No MSAA at all. No reflection MSSA. No MSAA at all. Everything else very high or if not ultra, even grass quality, which is the big frame rate killer in this game. And all advanced graphics on. Alright then, so in this video we're going to be doing a mission. This is very early on in the game. And then we're going to be driving all the way to Trevor's. So, now, when I ran this on my 760, it ran like shit. <laughs> it stuttered all over the place. What I'm glad to say, and to see, is that there's no stutter for me anymore. Now, this doesn't explain why there's stutter for lots of other people. If you go on the forums, you will see there are still people talking about uh, stuttering in this game. And uh, have Rockstar done anything to fix that? No, they haven't, because they're rolling around in millions and 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 millions and, if not billion, billions of dollars. Uh, and jumping into it from a diving board. Um, now, the game hits about 120, if not 130 in cutscenes, which is good. Now, if you're wondering why, sometimes cutscenes can... Sometimes in different games, sometimes cutscenes can completely fucking kill the frame rate, which makes no sense. But, so it's good to see the frame rate completely holds up in the cutscenes. Now, if you don't know, this game runs better in the night time, than it does in the day, which makes sense because in the daytime you can see further. But I would, I would. I, there's a lot more reflections at night, so you think that would have an effect on performance, but it doesn't. Now the game seems to average in the daytime around 45 with these settings on. Um, if you were to put grass quality lower, if not normal, which I definitely recommend doing uh, for anyone, because. Grass quality is the big frame rate killer, which is a bit strange. Um, yeah, I recommend putting that to normal, and that will do a big boost to your frame rate. So GTA 5, I played it in 2013 when it came out. Fucking loved it. I 100%ed it on 360. One of the only games I ever 100%ed, actually, along with Dark Souls. And uh, it's, a, it's a great game. It's a, it's a really good game. Now... The online is a different matter. I will link a video I did on it. I'll link two videos I did on it, actually. A one that's a big in-depth video and one that's like a piss take of the online as it is right now. It's really hard to get into a game on online even with like 30,000 people playing. Uh, but I've already explained why I think GT Online is bought. It's, a, it's bought. It's still, it can be really fun. And you can still have a lot of fun with it. It just takes a lot of effort on your side to try and find the fun. Um, now, I'm one of the only people, maybe, who thought GT4 was better. But only a bit better. Now, the thing is, GT4 is extremely different tonally to GT5. Like, the tone is drastically different. Drastically different. I mean, GTA 5 goes for a more light, light, well, not light, high, dark humor, dark humor, comedic route. And GTA 4 was extremely serious, extremely serious, but it was still quite funny because of Roman, mainly. <laughs> um, but I, like the GTA 4 story was so good. If like if I, I, I don't really know what to compare it to, because. I don't really watch any TV shows, but it felt like a really good TV show or a movie. Like a really serious kind of dark, with a bit of comedy in it, but not much. It was serious comedy. Um, I absolutely loved GT4 when it, when it came out, and I have insanely good memories of playing it online. Uh, extremely fun, doing just some memorable glitches like the uh, park. 
uh, what do you call, what do you call it? Swings, park swings glitch where you get your car into swing and then it fucking launches you miles. I have really good memories of playing GTA 4 online. I didn't, didn't, I didn't, um, 100% GTA 4 because it wasn't exactly super fun to, G uh, to, uh, 100% GTA 4. It was like killing pigeons, wasn't it? Half of it. Now, the, the PC port of GTA 5 is pretty, I mean, in terms of options, it's great. There's lots and lots and lots of options, which is always good to see. Lots of customizability for your rig, depending on what rig you've got. Um, but the game, I, I feel like the game is best suited on a console. It just doesn't, it doesn't translate amazingly well to a PC, the GTA series. It never really has. The shooting's a bit awkward on PC. It doesn't feel as tight as with a controller, which is weird, because PC mouse and keyboard is way better for shooting. Um, driving is surprisingly good, though, with a mouse and keyboard, although it is a lot better with a controller. I do recommend playing this game with a controller, at least in single player, in multiplayer. If you're going to do team deathmatch in multiplayer, go for a mouse and keyboard uh, any day, because you can aim a lot better, aim for the head a lot better. And the game has some really nice depth of field effects. Uh, slightly overboard, maybe, I would say. Like, there's blur everywhere. And there's some really nice reflections on on stuff when you're driving around. It's got this weird this weird kind of flair to it, which is a bit strange. It's, it, it's got a flair to it that the last, uh, the last gen uh, game version didn't have. Now the shooting, as you can see, I'm shooting fine, but it doesn't, it just doesn't feel great with a mouse and keyboard. As you can see there, some nice physics there. And getting into cover doesn't feel as great, really, with a, with a mouse and keyboard. I think, you know, G GTA has always been, a, well, at least from GTA 4 onwards, has always been about that snap aiming with a controller. And it feels pretty good, even though there's not much skill in the snap aiming. But it, it feels good. It just feels it works and it feels good. And you don't really have that on the uh, on the uh, PC version with a mouse and keyboard. GTA 5 got an amazing set of characters, though. I mean, the characters are. I mean, the characters are probably the best characters overall in any GTA game. I mean. Out of all the GTA games, it's... I mean, there's a lot, a lot of them. And a lot of people's opinions will differ depending on what's their favourite. I think it depends on the time and place and what age you are when you played them. For me, it was GTA 4. That's when I first got into GTA. I have played a decent amount of San Andreas, and I do really like that as well. Vice City is great because of the setting. And free is a bit clunky to go back to. Free isn't that great now. It was really good at the time, but now it's kind of hard to go back to when you've got San Andreas and Vice City and GTA 4. As you can see here, the frame rate does take a big dip as the sun is coming up. This is basically the lowest it drops to. I think it drops to like 35 at lowest. And I'm not really sure what causes the frame rate drops in the city. I'm pretty sure the grass quality is the reason, but I could be wrong. Um, it's it's hard to find the actual corporate, corporate, co corporate. Is that the is that is that the word, 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 word? I think it is. Um, it's hard to find the right cor corporate. Is that the right word? I'm saying it out loud and it doesn't sound right. But it's hard to find the right corporate f for the frame rate killer in this game. It's it's weird. What was weird is that I was trying it off video, and I had reflection MSA a times eight on, and I was getting like 40 FPS. As soon as I turned it off, I was getting 10. That seemed to be like a weird performance glitch. I restarted the game, and it and it worked fine after that. It's it, like the port is. I don't think the port's that great, really, personally, at least in terms of optimization and just overall steady performance, like. On the surface, if you look at the options, you're like, holy shit, there's a lot of options here, this must mean it's a great port. I don't think it's a great port. Personally, I don't think it's a good port. For the amount of time that it took for them to make it, I think it could have been a lot better.
a lot, lot better. And they don't really seem to be doing anything to update the game or fix any performance issues for anyone, which is kind of annoying. They just seem focused on selling shark cards for the online, which is completely fucking pointless because you make money so fast in the online, you don't fucking need it. Yes, yeah, it's just very strange. Very strange that they would sell that. So now we're going to drive all the way to Trevor's place, I believe, and uh, not once has the game stuttered. So that is the big, big, big thing for me. I'm very glad there's no stuttering anymore. That was the biggest issue. I tried GT Online, the exact same performance as the uh, single player. Uh, I thought maybe if I went into GT Online there would be stuttering. There wasn't any stuttering. I tried it for a good amount of time, about half hour. There was no stuttering at all. So it's the same performance, at least for me. Now I think GTA 5's world is better, but it's less memorable. And I think because GTA 4 was a lot more compact, so you remember a lot more the areas. In GTA 5 there's a lot of areas you don't ever visit, ever. Like you maybe visit them once every like 10, 20, 30 hours. Because, because it's so big, you spend most of your time in the city. You, it's very r rare that you go all the way to the top of the map or to the very left or to the very right. Um, you spend most of your time either in the city or around Trevor's place. Um, sometimes you go up to Mount Chiliad and that's a really memorable location. Um, I'm really impressed on how much they added for the next gen version. It's you will find a lot new. You will find a lot new with it in the campaign. If you do the side stuff, you will find a lot more content than you had in the uh, 360 and PS3 versions. Now, if you just did a single player, it's going to be the exact same experience, uh, only with a, you know some better graphics. But if you do the side stuff, you're going to find a lot more stuff. They added a lot more random, crazy things. They added, they added uh, drug things. I mean, at the top of Mount Chiliad, there's a, a like a plant drug you can take and then you turn into like a hawk <laughs> and you can fly <laughs> across everywhere which is really strange they added a lot more of those where you take drugs and you hallucinate uh, missions which are really cool the aliens the alien drug mission side of the side activity was one of the most memorable things in GTA 5 now it's been two years almost almost two years since this game came out and there still is no DLC for it yet now I think they've said there is going to be some DLC but they just haven't they will not speak on what it is I believe um remember when they showed first they first showed off GTA Online and they were like one day we'd love to add Vice City to it we want to add GTA 4's area we want to add San well actually what am I talking about we want to add GTA is it, G is it GTA 3 wait a minute isn't free in Liberty City so they just want to add Vice City's area, I believe, and Liberty City. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was two years ago now they said that. Uh, I remember when they first showed off GTA Online two years ago, I was like, Wow, this looks amazing. All the endless possibilities. And then it turns out it's just like another, it's just basically just GTA 4 again, only with a few more activities. And, oh yeah, it doesn't work <laughs> very well at all. Like, I was really... It, like, it's a game of two halves for me. Like, the campaign, amazing. If not the best game of 2013, at least in terms of single player. GTA Online, horrendously buggy, a piece of shit, a big disappointment, uh, and uh, possibly even made the game slightly worse, I would say. Like, if you think of GTA 5, you're going to think of the online, and it's going to affect your opinion on it, and it's going to cloud it a bit, which is really quite annoying, Rockstar. Fix the online, please, so then we won't have to have that fucking opinion. Yeah, I wish GTA Online was better. Like the heists, uh, the heists are good, but they don't work ever. <laughs> they never work. Like it's so rare when you get them to work. It's so frustrating because the heists are really good. Uh, they they have some amazing moments in them. They have some awesome like vehicle sections and some really creative stuff you've got doing them. As you can see, the game runs steadily. It never stutters. It drops to 35 uh, sometimes, 
it's averaging around 45.50. If you turn grass quality off, I bet that would go up quite a bit. Um, so performance is good, for me at least. It's good, it's steady, it's smooth, it doesn't stutter, there's no hitching, which is good. Which is good, the most important thing for me. Got no idea why. Um, if you're having stuttering issues, maybe try the configuration I'm using. Maybe that would help. I've got no fucking idea. I've not changed anything in the ini files, config files, anything. I don't know what caused stuttering on the old, on my old card. I don't know what causes stuttering for anyone. I don't think fucking Rockstar even know. That's why they're not even fucking fixing it. Which is a big annoyance for a lot of people. I like the physics in this game. Although they fucking um, got rid of some of the uh, damage models, didn't they? I mean, if you compare GT4's damage models to GT5's, GT4's were a lot more detailed and you could crumple the cars a lot more. Something that I was a little bit disappointed in with GT5. Anyway, I'm going to end the video there. Uh, I realised how much I loved GT5 single player when I was playing through that mission and playing, uh, playing this and driving all the way to Trevor's. It's... So it's a great game. It's a really, really good game. It's like it's a really, really good game. A game that will probably be remembered, hopefully, as one of the greatest last games of the last gen. So uh, thank you for watching and goodbye.